guys, welcome to the first part of this week's Coffin Hero Show, where I'm going to take you through the new graphic novels into the store this week. Happy Absolute Batman Week, by the way. But we did order stuff in, besides one of the best titles of the year. But we'll get to that in a, a later episode when I take you through all of the new single issues in for the racks this week. But we'll jump into the graphic novels and say quite a lot to get through. Uh, so we kick things off with Naked City, a graphic novel. This is by Eric Drucker, the author of Flood. Uh, on the edge of the city, three bohemians struggle to answer the question, is it possible to survive as an artist in the 21st century? A young singer with no family hitchhikes to the city and sings her heart out. Late one night, she encounters a street dancer who inspires her to have faith in her music no matter the cost. Desperate for money, she poses for a painter who has shifted from landscapes to nudes. And both of them learn a thing or two about the purpose of art and the meaning of success. So, uh, original graphic novel there. Next up, we have something for the younger readers, which is Sonic the Hedgehog, Five Minute Stories. This has six stories in one book. Fight Dr. Eggman, a man controlling slime with Sonic the Hedgehog. This collection includes six action-packed stories about Sonic, Tails, and all their friends that are perfect for reading on the go. Next up, we have Blasphemous. So this is the latest release from Distillery Comics. This one is from Mirko Andolfo. Uh, from international superstar Mirko Andolfo comes a new horror comedy that only Andolfo can deliver, asking the question, how many fans is your soul worth? Next up is a book called Final Cut. Now, this is by a creator called Charles Burns. You may recognize them for a book called Black Hole, which came out quite some time ago, but is massively revered within the, the comic community. And this is their first original work in 10 years, a new horror book about uh, the obsessions of an artist and lovely oversized as well. On to the standard size stuff. You've got American Psycho hitting trade this week. This is from Sumerian Comics. This is both a sort of side story to the movie and a sequel set years later. It's a dual narrative uh, where you see characters interweave throughout the events of the movie. We also see 20 years in the future with an unnamed female character. Next up we have Barbaric Born in Blood. So I've been loving these uh, Barbaric books. Uh, if you like Conan, it's like that, but just maybe a touch more juvenile, uh, but lots of fun uh, by Michael Marecki and art by Nathan Gooden. Next up, we have a new deluxe edition for a established classic, which is a Batman cult. Uh, this is this was a four issue miniseries. Uh, it was by Jim Starlin and uh, Bernie Wrightson. Uh, for years, Batman has watched over Gotham City as its invincible and incorruptible protector. Despite facing insurmountable odds over and over again, he has never been broken until now. Uh, yeah, it's really, really interesting book this. It sort of shows Batman at his lowest end and it actually shows him in a rare uh, scenario where he's actually defeated. Uh, next up, we have finally, I've been waiting about two months for this because we kept being sent volume two. Finally, volume three of Conan the Barbarian, The Age Unconquered. So Jim Zub continuing to do the Lord's work on Conan with art on this one by Raphael de la Torre. Conan ventures forth to the Age of Atlantis. Next up, DC are continuing to print their Elseworlds books. So we've got Elseworlds Batman, Volume 2. Uh, you have uh, people working on this one, such as Doug Moench, uh, Kelly Jones, John Beatty, Malcolm Jones III. Uh, this gives free reign to the darker side of Batman, collecting Batman and Dracula, Red Rain, Batman Bloodstorm, and Batman Crimson Mist. From there, on to a couple of epic collections. We have Fantastic Four, the world's greatest comic magazine, and that can only mean one thing. This is volume one. So Fantastic Four, from the very, very start, is right here. And it's, this covers issues from 1961 to 1963, and covers Fantastic Four numbers one to 18. Next up, we have Moon Knight epic collection. This is volume five. Uh, you'll see a few different characters here that I know uh, a lot of regulars and store big fans of. You'll see Ghost Rider in the front, you'll see Punisher on the back. Uh, as I say, Volume 5, this covers 1989 to 1991. This covers Mark Spector, Moon Knight 8 to 25, and material from Punisher Annual number 2. Next up, we have the frankly ridiculously sized Big Boy, which is the G.I. Joe Real American Hero Compendium 1. This thing is huge. Yo Joe! This collects G.I. Joe Real American Hero 1 to 50. Uh, pop culture changed forever when Larry Hammond's G.I. Joe, a real American hero, made its comic book debut. And now you can experience every issue from the original series to tie-ins in this new reader-friendly compendium format. Discover the incredible heroes of G.I. Joe, the terrifying villains of Cobra, and all the forgettable stories within this series. Collect issues 1 to 50. Next up, we have I Hate Fairyland, Volume 7, uh, In the Meantime. 
this collects uh, issues 11 to 15 of the second volume and continues Scotty Young's sort of reinterpretation of Alice in Wonderland. Next up we have Scarlet Witch, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. So um, this is volume three of the Scarlet Witch books. Uh, this collects Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver one to four and also has material from X-Men number four. A really good one out this week that would come personally highly recommended is the Seven to Eternity Compendium. So Seven to Eternity, Rick Remender, Jerome Opina on this. This collects Seven to Eternity one to 17. Uh, the God of Whispers has spread an omnipresent paranoia to every corner of the Kingdom of Zal. His spies hide in every hall, spreading mistrust and fear. Adam Osidas, a dying knight from a disgraced house, must choose between joining a hopeless band of magic users in their desperate bid to free their world of the evil god or accepting his promise to give Adam everything his heart desires. One of the best looking books of recent times. The art from Jerome Opino on that is next level good. Next up, we have the first trade for The Spectacular Spider-Man, which of course is the first ever team-up book for Peter Parker and Miles Morales. This collects the first five issues of that, as well as material from Web of Spider-Man number one. Next up, we have Superman 78 and the Metal Curtain. So this is uh, continuing on from the continuity of the Superman movie, which of course was released in 1978. Uh, when the planet Krypton exploded, his last son was rocketed across the cosmos and came to sell in a small town in Kansas. But what else came with him? And what if a piece of his home landed somewhere we never knew about? As Superman has become a symbol of strength and pride for America, the Soviet Union looks to crush that image with a creation of their own, built by their own might and forged by their own power, Metallo. And we finish off then with a couple of omnibuses. We have Moon Knight by Jed McKay. Uh, this is a fantastic run. I uh, absolutely love this Moon Knight run. Uh, and this is very, very comprehensive. So this collects issues 1 to 30, as well as Devil's Reign Moon Knight, the Moon Knight Annual, and material from Avengers 45 and another Moon Knight Annual. Jed McKay writing Alessandro Capuccio on art. I mean, I actually think that they should have by Jed McKay and Alessandro Capuccio because the art is every bit as important in this as the uh, as the writing. But brilliant, brilliant run though. And then we finish off with Spider-Man by David Michelini and Eric Larson. So Omnibus here, which collects Spider-Man 287, 324, 327, uh, and 329 to 350. And then a bunch of other issues. <clears throat> Spider-Man 15, 18, 21 to 23. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 19 to 21, a material from Marvel Comics presents every Spider-Man story featuring the action-packed art of Eric Larson, including his landmark fan favorite collaboration with writer David Michelini. So that is everything in this week in terms of graphic novels, omnibuses, hardcovers, all the usual good stuff. Uh, these will all be going out onto the shelves for New Comic Book Day this Wednesday. Uh, as I say, check back later slash tomorrow morning. We'll see where it fits in when I get through this frankly massive delivery uh, in terms of taking you through the single issues out this week, the ones going on the racks and uh, again, lots of big releases this week. So until then guys, I hope this proved useful as ever. I'll hopefully see you in the store throughout the week. Until then, take it easy.